boys and girls. Welcome to Children's Church. My name is Levan, and this week's story is called The Stubborn King Saul Disobeys. We've got a really, really good lesson in store for you. But before we get into it though, have a listen to the song for me, please. that you enjoyed that from boys and girls because I really did. Let's set the tone for this week's lesson 
And as I said before, we've got a really, really interesting story in store for you. Before we get into it though, can we open with a word of prayer, please? We've said before, that before we do something really important, it's always wise for us to ask God for his wisdom and for some guidance, and we can achieve that through prayer. So would you put your hands together? Would you close your eyes and would you bow your head for me, please? You can say after me. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day. Lord, I just want to give you all the honor and the praise for this opportunity to hear your word again. God, I pray that this word inspires me to do great things this week ahead. And I pray that you open up my ears and you really allow me to truly hear this message so that it impacts me in a great way. Amen. Boys and girls, I'm so glad that you can join us. This week's memory verse comes from 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. It reads as follows. Saul did not obey God. Say it with me, please. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. Saul did not obey God. Say it with me one more time, please. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. Saul did not obey God. Let's get into this week's story. King Saul is now the newly appointed king. Unlike King Saul and his soldiers and his people, the Philistines do not love God. They've got no relationship with God and the Philistine army is now determined that they want to attack King Saul and his soldiers. King Saul has a small army. So when him and his soldiers hear about the Philistine army that wants to come and attack them, they are really nervous. They are really scared because um, not only are they a small army, some of the soldiers are not really confident to fight this army as well. So many of King Saul's soldiers decide that they're going to run away. They want no part of this, this fight at all. Those that remain behind are so nervous that they are shaking in their boots and their teeth is chattering because they are really, really nervous to fight this rather big Philistine army. King Saul knows that he needs God to really, really help him, him and his soldiers, uh, if they have any chance of winning this fight and getting through this battle. So Samuel, the priest at the time, makes contact with King Saul and he says to Saul that he is willing to do a sacrifice to God and he's confident that once him and King Saul do the sacrifice, that God is going to really, really help King Saul and his soldiers uh, when they uh, embark on this fight with the Philistine army. Samuel also says to King, King Saul, though, that he'll only be able to do the sacrifice after seven days. And that King Saul just has to hang tight and he's got, really, got to be really patient and he's got to really trust that uh, God is in control and that God is going to go before King Saul and his soldiers, and that after seven days, once the sacrifice is done, God is going to show just how wonderful and how awesome he is. King Saul agrees. So after one, two, three, four, five, six days, Samuel has still not come back to King Saul, he's still not come to the, to the castle, to the palace, and he's still not done the sacrifice. King Saul is starting to get really nervous though, boys and girls, because he's heard that this big Philistine army is getting closer and closer and closer to them and that the fight would start really soon. He's also uh, nervous because his soldiers are really anxious. And as I said before, many of his soldiers have now run away. So his army, King Saul's army that is, is becoming smaller and smaller. So he's really concerned because Samuel, after six days, has still not come to the palace to do the sacrifice. King Saul has no idea what to do. 
He paces up and down and down and up. He's really, really anxious. On the sixth day, Samuel still hasn't come and King Saul now decides that enough is enough. He decides that he's going to do the sacrifice to God himself. King Saul then commands that some of his soldiers collect all the things that are necessary to do the sacrifice and he's determined right there and then that he is going to do the sacrifice himself in the hope that God would now answer their prayers and really help them um, with the fight that's going to be happening really, really soon. King Saul then does the sacrifice and just as he finishes the sacrifice, Samuel comes along. Samuel is really, really disappointed in King Saul and his actions. He's really disappointed because he had said to King Saul that after seven days, him, Samuel, would come to the castle and he would do the sacrifice. He's also really disappointed because King Saul was impatient. He was really disappointed because King Saul also didn't trust God's perfect plan and will for him and for God's people. Samuel then says to King Saul, King Saul, God is really disappointed in you. He said to you after seven days that he would, that I would come back and I would do the sacrifice for you. You didn't listen though. And because of that, sadly, God has decided to appoint someone else as king. King Saul was really disappointed. He was really sad. But after some thought, he understood and he realized why Samuel had said what he said. And he understood the reasons why God decided to appoint someone else as king. While all of this is happening, the Philistine army is getting closer and closer and closer to fight King Saul and his soldiers. So King Saul's son Jonathan crept over a wall and with some soldiers started fighting the Philistine army. As they were fighting, an earthquake happened, boys and girls. The Philistine army became so anxious and so nervous when the, when the earthquake happened that they started now shaking in their boots and they started becoming really, really nervous. God's people were convinced that this was a sign from God. It was a reminder from God that he was in control of all things and that he would protect God's people just as he had promised. Isn't that a lovely story, boys and girls? A reminder to us that we need to trust God, that we need to have faith that God's perfect plan and his will are meant for us. And that what will be, because God commands it, will come to be. Have a listen to the song for me, please. in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom on the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. really enjoyed spending time with you this week boys and girls i hope that you enjoyed the story before we close this week's lesson though 
Join me in prayer, please. Dear God, thank you for loving me and giving me your all. When I grow up, I will still be serving you. I want to know you more. I want to love you more. I'll never forget you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. boys and girls. I'm really hoping to see you next time. Have a blessed week, boys and girls. Take care. Lots of love. Bye.